knows the common mistakes? Because common mistake videos are very common. Everyone can tell you, oh, don't drop your hand, don't load up your punches, which you can load up your punches. But people rarely explain to you why you're doing the things that you're doing. And I think if we understand why we're doing them, that'll make us less likely to make those mistakes. But what is this? Stop doing that. I'm gonna talk about maybe five mistakes that people are making over and over and over again. And your coach is saying it to you over and over and over again. You keep doing it like an idiot. Like you understand the words that he's saying. There's a reason that we do these things. We've said before, most of our mistakes come from us being lazy cowards. That's the reason we do most things wrong. But I'm also gonna talk about some things that people say are mistakes and they're really not. It's not that big a deal. Let's start with the jab, because the jab is a fine place to start. Very common mistake with the jab. There's two of them, they're sort of related, and they're ones that your coach will tell you to stop doing and then you just keep doing it. The first is this little, I call it shucking the jab, it's where you're like, oh, I'm gonna punch you. And people say, oh yeah, no duh, that's a telegraph, right? Everyone knows that's a telegraph, but everyone wants to do it. Here's why, do you know why? Because it's more efficient actually. We go out, boom! We generate more power, and that's what we think. That's what our little dumb brains think when we think about punching people. We think it has to hurt, and we think that it has to be like a big, big thud, and you can generate more power with less energy by loading your body, turning that fist in a circle, and sending it. Now, somebody will invariably talk about how there's little timing things you can do, and like, fake the guy and then go, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that I, you know, they're beginners or intermediate, and the coach just says jab, and they go, Shh. and they go like this. I'll slow it down, they go. Whew. It's because you're putting more of yourself into it. You're putting your whole body into that jab. When it comes to being efficient and preserving energy, that's gonna be the source of a lot of these mistakes. The other big jab mistake is when we put the jab back in our pocket, where we jab, and go like that and then back up. This is super common. You see professional fighters do this one all the time. Jab, down here, and then back. And a lot of these, I need, to, I need to make it clear, you're doing these. You think, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm exaggerating, I mean, some people do, but I'm exaggerating it to make a point to show you the motion, but you probably do this. Where you let it fall. Why? Because arresting that motion, particularly on missed jabs, if we miss a jab, if I jab and miss, arresting the motion of the jab using the muscles in your arm is, requires more energy than letting it hit the end, circle a little bit, and then using some of that momentum to come back. This is, this requires energy here, energy here. If we let it fall, this requires less energy at the end and we harness some of that potential energy and bring it back. Well, I guess we're harnessing, are we harnessing kinetic energy and turning it back into potential? I don't know. I think it's potential into kinetic. That's from science. But, we're, it's, kin but, but it, we're, it's kinetic energy, hmm. but then we're re-harnessing it and repurposing it for oh, okay. potential energy yeah. to use it for a different direction of movement. I don't know. I mean, I, I learned this in science when I was growing up. Like, I don't know. Someone comment below, help us out. We're using some of the momentum to bring it back. Don't. Stop. Stop doing that. Don't do it at all. And this is the same with the left hook. People want to do this with the left hook. They want to go like, boom, down to there. Or they want to go, boom. They want to send it in a circle or recover it in a circle because it's more efficient. They're not leaking energy anywhere, but you need to leak. You're supposed to be leaking in training. We leak in training so we don't burst in war, I think is the same. And if you do one, it makes you do the other. So if I'm going in a circle, I'm gonna keep going in a circle. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be putting that thing, you know, quit. I just did it. I just did it. If you watch that back, I jabbed and tried to look at my handiwork. Everybody does this stuff. You gotta exaggerate.
And just then, just in those like five or six punches, my jab started getting better because I was super hyper-focused on the practice, on making these reps perfect. Now in sparring, you know, stuff's gonna go sideways, you're gonna get stuff wrong, but be intentional with your practice. See, that sucked. That was better. If we do this, this saves us some energy. It gives us more power uh, for less of our arm muscles because our arm muscles are weak. So we want to add in our But Don't save the energy. Which that brings us to the legs, the feet. There's like an amateur version of footwork, right? That's very common. I see people of all levels do this where they, they move around like this. Or they move like this, all right? And why are we doing that? It's to conserve energy because if I wanna move this way and I put my feet up under me and then fall over this way, that takes less energy than getting in a good stance using my, and moving using the muscles in my legs. This takes more energy. My calves already start to burn just during the warm up when we're doing footwork days. But that's what we need, we need legs for days. When people wanna move, when I try to get them to do, use more of a karate style of movement, right? And they start doing this, they get lazy because using all these feet muscles and ankle muscles and, you know, those is tiring. But even, even with a more tight guard, boxing style footwork, people wanna do this. And you might think, well, it's excused if the, if the opponent's way over there and I'm just moving around. Which brings us to one of those things that's a mistake that's not always a mistake. This right here is no more dangerous or unstable than this. And I would argue that if you're practiced at any point during walking, you could throw either strike. But during this, you can only strike as you land. And it becomes telegraphed and rhythmic. We do all this stuff because we're afraid of getting tired. Because getting tired is one of the most terrifying things in combat sports or fighting in general. The feeling of being tired when you feel like your opponent is not is really, really scary. Loading up. That's what we do when we get tired. We do all kinds of screwed up stuff when we get under stress. We do things that are inefficient. We do things that we think are, are subconsciously, we think are more efficient. They're actually detrimental to our goals. Loading up is one of those things that people always complain about. They watch a video of you hitting the bag and they're like, stop loading up your shots. And it's like, no, I want you to see this coming. What are you gonna do, block this? Big leaping left hook. I'm this far away from the guy, right? And I load up big. What's he gonna, clip me out of the air, please? He's gotta block or move or address it. I just got ring position or I just landed on his guard. It still hurts. All right, loading up's okay if it's done intelligently and tactically. Now, let's talk about elbow flare. This is a funny one. I don't think this is as big an error. You watch anyone throw a hook? I get this all the time. People always comment. When I throw my right hand, this is funny. I throw my jab, boom, this one's always locked in place. When I throw my right hand, I do this. I do it all the time, every video. And some astute guy is thinking like, oh yeah, you're open for what? What am I open for? At best, the only scenario from the guy is like a, maybe a right kick, but a hard stepped into right hand is a great counter for his right kick. I think that exposing the body on the far side is not nearly uh, egregious as an error as people make it out to be. And what's funny about that is I had a coach and he would harp on that all the time. When you throw your lead hook, your elbow wants to come up. Why does it want to come up? Because we actually save energy and generate more centrifugal or centripetal. I haven't learned that yet. Circular force. Keeping this down tight actually puts less of our body into the punch naturally. I mean, you can add that in as you get better proprioception, but lifting this feels better. It feels like you have, I'm exaggerating, but it feels like you have more power. I had a coach, he would yell at me about this all the time. And he would yell at me about this one all the time. 
He'd be like, elbows down, elbows down, elbows down. And then you'd watch him fight. Guess where his elbows were going? Flying in the air. Everyone that says elbows, I yell elbows down. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm yelling elbows down all the time. It's technically an error, but uh, most of the people telling you that, they do it themselves and no one ever really gets hit there. Now, the last one, and I don't know, I've, I've never heard anyone talk about this. It's a thing that MMA guys do when they're doing their striking practice. It's the weirdest thing. I don't even know how, I can't even demonstrate this thing that MMA guys do when they're, when they're doing their striking practice, when they're sparring with each other. I can't even pantomime it because I don't understand, like my body won't do it, all right? They do this thing, they do these theatrics. They do these theatrics, especially with a big right, especially the overhand right. Go on Instagram and watch any two decent MMA guys sparring you will eventually see this. They do this weird theatrical loopy thing. They make contact usually with the guy's shoulder or hand or something. And then they do this like, this like, ha, my right hand is so good. They go, boom. They do that with the right hand. Boom. What is that? What is that? 